JavaScript is an amazing language and in 2021, if you're doing any sort of development which involves browsers or users using browsers at any point, then chances are you have encountered JavaScript in the form of web or server, Node.js or even mobile application these days. In this video, let's just discuss my top 10 JavaScript pro tips which will help you become a better developer. Finding your code execution time. Instead of using old and hacky ways of finding how much time a particular algorithm or a code snippet is using, you can actually use console.time and console.timeend in order to determine how fast your code is. This has an added benefit that it will automatically display it in the console and will help you manage your timers in your application. Here's a quick example of how you can achieve this in JavaScript. You have to start the timer by calling console.time with a label and once you are done with the execution part of the code, that is the amount of code you want to separate, you can always call callzone.timeend and in the console, you're gonna see you have the execution time with you. Cool, isn't it? Next up is using array methods. I see a lot of people who do not make use of these awesome methods which were available since ES6. Array.find, map, reduce, sum, filter for each. You can do all the things which they do with a simple for loop as well. But whenever you can use these helper methods, use them because they keep your code clean, concise and declarative instead of being imperative. Use async await instead of promises because that is syntactically much easier on eyes. Consider this example of a simple fetch request where you need the headers as well as the body of the request. Without async await, it might become a mess to manage all of this stuff in promises but with async await, you not only have a much cleaner syntax, but it's much easier to read. So try using async await wherever you can instead of just regular promises.10 because they are usually a drop in replacement for promises. Convert callback based APIs into promises. If you have a function which requires a callback instead of a promise being function, you can easily convert it into a promise being function by creating a new function which returns promise and results in the callback or you know the callback function is the resolver function. So you can do that and use that same functionality with async await later down the line once you have created a promisified version out of it. Destructure code a lot. Destructuring can help you make your syntax look much more concise and clean and people who know how destructuring works will be able to read your code very easily. And most of the people who use JavaScript these days know what destructuring is. Take a quick look at this example. You can either do props.a, props.b, props.c all the way down, or you can extract and destruct them all the way in a single line. Similarly, with arrays, you can use a similar methodology to get individual elements out of a particular array. Like an example, you can see on your screen. Did you know that you can use dynamic key names? That is, the key name is actually in the variable, and then you use it as the name of the key in the object. This is perfectly possible in JavaScript if you use square bracket notation, and put the variable name. Once you do that, instead of treating that as a regular key of the object, JavaScript will try to evaluate the value of that variable and extract the key out of it. Now do remember that the regular rules for keys still apply, that it has to be a string, it cannot be an object or anything, otherwise you'll get those weird key names, which are object, object. Top level await is already available in Node.js and Dino, but you can use top level await in Chrome DevTools as well. It is especially helpful when you just want a quick fetch request and want the results right there instead of just adding .10 methods and figuring out what the response is. Alongside this, you can also use let multiple times in the Chrome DevTools REPL, so they allow that. Use sets. In JavaScript, you can use set as a data structure to improve the performance and functionality of your application. You can use set to eliminate duplicate elements. You can destructure set back into an array. You can convert an array into a set and do all sorts of fun operations. Here's a quick example on how you would convert an array with multiple values into a set which will have unique values and back into an array which will have unique values now. Did you know about window.matchmedia? It's a very handy method to actually use CSS media queries inside of JavaScript. Here's an interesting use case of CSS media query. You can use that in JavaScript to listen for a breakpoint on 768 pixel, for example. 
This breakpoint media query when attached to a listener will fire that JavaScript function every single time the media query is executed by CSS itself. This has the advantage that you can compose much more complicated queries and complex queries like, like mixing and matching widths and orientations, which cannot be done in a clean way with just JavaScript. Although you should realize that media queries is about three times as slow in Chrome compared to inner width, for example. But if your code is using media queries in a better way, in a justified way, it's still super fast and super convenient to use. I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. That really helps. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in the next video.